Uh, this is supposed to be my one year review of lace making, but it's actually my two year review of lace making because that's how long I delayed this reminder in my to-do list. Hello my book hoes, welcome to book hoarding by Bianca. I am Bianca and today I am finally going to get to my uh, year in review of lace, but it's really two years from review of lace because um, a lot has happened. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the classes I've taken and also the various types of lace that uh, I have gotten into and kind of talk about the differences there so hopefully that is helpful and fun. If you haven't caught my original video, uh, in April of 2021 I uploaded a video that said I tried lace making for a week and this is what happened and it was an overview of just like bobbin lace making specifically. And in the interim, that's been one of my highest um, viewed videos, and I have been asked many times to do lace um, videos. And to that I say, maybe asterisks, because I am not a pro at doing any of these lace forms. I've only been like doing them off and on when I have time between things. And if you've been following me, you know that I've been going to a uh, fashion school, and I virgoed my way into the sun, and now I'm going to get another master's degree. So. I haven't had a ton of time to do specifically lace work, but I will have some videos coming up about different parts of it that hopefully are useful to people. So if you missed that video, you can go check it out now, but the TLDR is that I started doing bobbin lace because I found lace talk and I loved what I was seeing there and also it was, you know, early days, I guess at this point pandemic because we're deep into still COVID and many other things that are keeping us at home. And basically I took it up, I used some videos that I found online to start getting into it and a lot of tutorials and after that I started taking classes. So you can watch my one week review um, as a link um, somewhere up here and also my description. But the basics are that I just was bored and at home and it seemed really really cool. When I get into lace making I'd say if you like spending a lot of time on a very specific task, this is the thing for you. You can spend a ton of time on literally new designs, make your own designs, or you can work through Renaissance workbooks. Like you can find original workbooks, um, public domain from like the Met and other places and work through those on your own time if you want. Those are, it's real. You can just print them out and work on it. So that's a thing. You could, you have a ton of resources to do whatever you want. Uh, I'd say for historical costume people, if you want to deep dive into this, it's a fun, very niche um, craft to get into. It's not impossible and I definitely think there are a ton of budget ways to do it. I linked actually to a bunch of those in my original blog post as well, which I will link in my description, but there's tons of budget ways to get into this um, in terms of just practicing because really the first many, I feel like months of your time is just doing samplers and figuring out tension and working with the bobbins and all that stuff but honestly it's really fun and fulfilling to get into and if you just make a million samplers that you can turn to bookmarks as gifts it's kind of cool all right so really fast i want to talk to you about the different types of lace making that i have gotten into now there are many many more types of lace making in the world these are just a few of them okay but of course i couldn't just stop at bobbin lace okay so first let's talk about bobbin lace this is my very loud bag of bobbins so with bobbin lace, you have these bobbins and you can get different kinds. I just got the basic ones from Lacisse that I will link to, obviously. Um, and you wrap some thread around it. I will make a video that goes into more detail about the threads and all of that. But basically, the um, higher the number, the smaller and more fine the thread and the lower the number, the bigger the thread. That's a basic thing that is hard to remember. Anyway. So you have bobbins, you wrap them with thread, you make pairs. These are um, from a working that I finished, but they are in pairs and then you hang them in pairs off of your pattern. And then you do this a million times uh, in various formations until you get things, lace. Yes, lace, that's the thing. Here are some samplers that I have done. And you probably recognize these if you've looked at my book review. So I have a book review on um, a bobbin lace making beginner book. If you want to check that out to get started into bobbin lace making, that's that's a great way at home to do that. Um, I'm going to go over some classes that you can also take in a second, but let's just go over these. So these are all the samplers that I've done from that book. And this is like maybe a year after doing off and on bobbin lace at home. 
um, doing different samplers that I found online and taking one other class. Um, so this was fun to work through because it really works you through your skills and the way the patterns work is that you use some of these twice. So um, it the book will tell you like, you know, use this one and you're doing like different stitches on them. So um, it's really cool because you can just like use the same one and once you finish like with one stitch, then you take it off, you're working off the piece and then you come back to it and you do a different stitch and then you've kind of solidified that learning, if that makes sense. I really dig it because these are really cute little bookmark things that you can just give to people. Um, so I, I dig little samplers that are re-giftable, um, but I am keeping these in a thing for now just because it's nice to see my growth and changes and all that stuff. So Bob and Lace, you are either going to put your pattern on a cookie pillow or on a bolster pillow, um, which I have videos on and I need to make a new one for a cookie pillow. But the basics are that you do that you use the bobbins to go back and forth in a specific pattern and then you finish your working and you take all the pins out and voila lace all right we've made it to needle lace so needle lace is basically when you're just using a needle and thread and you have made a structure um we're using couching stitches and um you have just used like coordinate around the edges and you fill in all the things with really cool stitches and then you do basically buttonhole for four years of your life on the outside which is what I'm putting off clearly on the sampler. Needle lace essentially just needs a needle, uh, the thread, and then your pattern which you're going to mount on a thing. So this is a paper pattern under here that I um, taped down to a blue piece of fabric. It's like a fat quarter and then I uh, base stitched around it. There's actually like contact paper um, that people use for this stuff. I use tape stuff down because I, I can't, I don't wanna buy really expensive blue contact paper when I could just print on blue paper and then tape it down. Um, that's me, but there's like a specific contact paper in lace making that people really love and it's blue. Um, it's not like easy to find, I think at like office supply stores. Like you, you, I only found it through lace supply places. And the blue is supposed to be helpful for your eyes. So your eyes don't get, I don't know, uh, strained, but I just print on the paper and then put tape over that. Um, a lot of my lace stuff is just me being like, I don't want to buy that because I'm cheap and have not a ton of money, which is a reminder that there's no wrong way to do a craft. If someone tells you there's a wrong way to do a craft, they're lying. That's needle lace. And I've done a class and some samplers and actually designed a little bunch of my own stuff. And that actually brings us really nicely into Battenberg Lace, which is adjacent. So I need to grab a sample of my Battenberg. If you have seen my Arts and Druid craft, you know that I made a D&D &D D20 uh, Battenberg piece. And so basically, I don't have it with me because it's somewhere not with me right now. And it's terrifying that I don't have it. Um, this is my pattern. Yes, isn't it cool? So that's where the tape lace goes and then you fill in the workings in between with stuff and so you mount this much the way that you do the needle lace which is it's this over some layers and you do couching stuff and but you couch the tape instead so here's a sith holocron that i made um, with my own pattern um it's hard to see i'll do close-ups later but um you can see like the tape is here and here in the insides and then i did needle lace stitches in between to fill it in. So you're basically laying instead of like with the needle lace you lay down like coordinate and then you fill all that in. Instead for this you're laying down tape. And so what is tape? Well it comes in different varieties. Um, I think a lot of them are now machine made but uh, tape is honestly just like a thing. Tape lace itself is like a thing. You could make tape lace which is this stuff. I was gifted like a ton of it from my husband's aunt, great aunt. Uh, who apparently like just had a bunch of Battenberg lace stuff, including books and patterns and stuff, and samplers, and had never used it. So she gifted it to me and I was like, yes, I will take in your craft things and learn a new craft. So that's what I've done. I uh, learned Battenberg and then I've made my own patterns, which has been really, really fun. Um, and the same thing for needle lace. I've tried to make my own patterns for needle lace. Uh, this is a cathedral inspired, but they're just fun to like mess around with and to make your own custom like little detail pieces. I think if you want to get into this stuff, doing the Battenberg tape lace is actually the easiest and best 
personally. And that is actually a lace that I feel confident making more content now on. So uh, stay tuned for that because I actually think I will be doing that um, a lot more. I, if you haven't seen, I actually did start doing that and recreate um, Padme's wedding lace. Um, if you haven't seen that, it exists. That's a thing I've been working on slowly because uh, it is this pattern uh, that I took off of the high quality photos, but they used a Battenberg lace bed sheet, duvet, whatever. And, um, they took it apart and made her wedding dress out of that, um, out of that lace along with some, um, basic, um, cording. One day I will recreate Padme's wedding dress, but not this day because mama's got to go to grad school again. Okay. So I want to talk about the classes that I've done. This is just kind of a basic review. Some of them I remember better than others. So bear with me. I've only taken online classes for this. I've not gone in person. Um, I'm, there are in-person classes. I just haven't done them. And I am a person who just prefers to be at home. I'm just gonna be real. I prefer to be with all of my things, with all of my craft supplies in one place. Cause then I can run over and iron a thing and run over and grab a thing when I need it. Um, because I have a lot of crafts that like overlap and stuff. So it's like, I'm not going to put this very tiny hook in with just my lace stuff because it needs to be with all the other hooks because I need that for anyway. I just prefer online. Also all the classes I've done online, record it and then give you the link so you can watch it later. Some of them are like, we only have this up for like a week. Some of them are like, we'll give you three months. So I kind of love that for review personally, because I don't know about you, but man, sometimes I just forget stuff. Or if you miss the teacher's demo, um, it can be a little difficult, but also there's comfort in working at my own pace at home, personally. Here is a quick review of the classes that I have taken. The first class I took was a basic, I think it was two session, beginning bobbin lace um, class that was um, through the Texel Art Center at home, which is basically just TAC at home is just their online course uh, thing. It was taught by Elena Kanagi Liu, who you probably know from like a ton of lace stuff. Um, she's really great. And she was one of like the lace talkers that I saw that like got me into lace making. Um, so it was a really great class. It was a basic intro sampler situation where you had um, like they sent you a little thing, little pattern to prick and then you know you did your bob and stuff at home but like we talked in class like she taught us how to properly um put you know all the stuff on our bobbins and to lay the piece and all that stuff which was really helpful and really great um so we worked through some samplers and then she gave us um a cool little heart pattern to work through too on our own and it was just a really good pacing um i really enjoyed it i don't know if they have any beginning bobbing lace classes anymore online um, but uh, that was a really, really good experience for me personally. I will also say that they, uh, the TAC has scholarships. It helps with the barrier of entry to some of these crafts. They also have a ton of other workshops that I'm really thinking about taking um, from home because they are not local to me. So that's been a thing too. Um, taking these classes from places that aren't local to uh, me has really changed my life because accessibility, man, like, whew. I could actually learn a thing from experts and not have to go all the way to New York. That's great. Speaking of amazing classes taking place that I could not go to, uh, I have taken um, two levels of needle lace class from uh, Maggie Kinsel Brown. Uh, I think that she offers maybe multiple other kinds of lace, uh, lace work and adjacent stuff, but I took two levels of needle lace from her and that was a sampler that I showed that I didn't finish. Uh, and I have another sampler from her too. Um, the little underwear um, sampler, the bra and panties. Um, so I need to finish those this summer. And she's so, so like not only really good, like she has all of her um, lessons uh, that she gives you via PDF and like video recording stuff so you can watch it or just look through the stuff. And then you can also like save it for later as you need it. But like I love her philosophy on lace making and crafting, which is really based in like, there's no real right or wrong way to do this stuff. And I really prefer that as a learner. Like I definitely think that it's fun to have somebody teach you the rules, but I really am not a huge fan of someone being like, no, you must go back and fix this mistake because that is a mistake. And it's like, just keep going, move on. Like we're all learning. And um, that's just my preference for learning. It's just like embracing the imperfections and being okay with it. Because I think that like, if we're doing these things for fun, 
they should just be for fun. Like if I'm doing something for work and I have to go back and forth on revisions, it's for work. That's why it's work. If it's for fun, I don't need to be going back and forth. I really enjoy uh, her work. She's really open to talking about like different parts of lace making and supplies and like has a ton of insights into various, um, just like so many things in terms of lace making world. So check her out. Um, she offers classes every once in a while. I think she's done some in person now again, but um, just set up an alert for her classes because you'll enjoy them. You'll make friends. It's so fulfilling to actually do that through um, her stuff. And like the way that her samplers work are really cool because Bob and Lace, you, know, you kind of make like a little like piece of large tape, if you will. But like with her, you're making like these kind of interesting shapes or you're making the underwear set, which I think is also really cute and cheeky. And like, we need more cheeky lace, right? Mm. And the last online class I did take was um, through the Lace Museum. It was specifically a class that was based on like joining and on the round, I think that's what it was. So the way that their classes work is that they do have a 12 hour beginning Bob and Lace like boot camp class that they do every like pretty frequently it seems like if you're interested in their classes check like set an alert so that you can um uh, remember to check them out like months ahead of time because their classes do sell out they do fill up um i took this virtually as well i will say that they have a ton of other lace classes as well like i've been taking the other ones but they basically have this 12 hour one-on-one -on -one that you can apply for a scholarship for by the way and then they have these other like kind of more advanced skills within Bob and Lace, which is like, it's more focused on like, like I did the one like on joining and everything, but there's others they do on different parts of Bob and Lace making and different techniques around Bob and Lace making. Um, so if you want to basically get really into one thing, you can through this. I will say that like this was very, very holistic. There was a lot of attention to your form and your attention. There was a bunch of tutors in the class watching. So like you have to have your camera on your thing and they um, they will tell you when you're making a mistake and work you through it and try to work you back through it to fix it. Um, so in lieu of being in person where you could have somebody kind of watching and telling you, you actually have somebody actually actively in that that are listening and watching and making sure that you stay um, in a good, I guess, standing, I don't know, that you are able to complete your piece. I can't find my um, samplers for that class, but I know I have photos that I will use for this, but they send you a nice little, oops, they send you a nice little packet that comes with it that um, has photos of the finished pieces and talks you through the different parts of the pattern. And then, um, you know, there's also just like the pattern pieces themselves that everything comes with. So, um, I think it's really nice. Uh, they give you enough of a packet that like there's stuff that is not covered in class essentially that you can go and make your own sampler or your own piece um, and work through those different things at home, which I think is kind of really fun um, to give, you know, your students a little extra like oomph afterwards um, of those kind of really centered classes on uh, like doing a sampler and stuff. So. That was really fun. Um, Karen was my teacher. She is really, really on top of things. Um, everything was explained really well. I'd say if you haven't taken a Bob and Lace class before, do their 12 hour intensive because I think that will probably set you up with every skill you need to really nicely jump into the um, next level because I'd only done samplers. Um, and like in like a lot lower stakes settings and they are very just like intense is like sounds negative but it's not like they're just like really really intent on making sure that you get what you need to out of the class and that you are um, making you know the right moves and doing things properly and I mean there's nothing wrong with that I think that's definitely like one style of teaching it is uh appreciate it if you are trying to learn how to do this really really perfectly and really well i'm not that kind of gal uh but i did appreciate learning the different um methods if you will like i liked learning how to join things and i did enjoy you know getting a slightly better at bob and lace but um that's just like they have a very different style than like some of the other people i go to and that's fine they also offer a ton of other classes from other teachers if you want to check them out 
And now it is my favorite time of any video where I talk about the future of my lace making. So, I mean, in hindsight, if you checked out um, anything about, again, my Arts and Druid craft uh, collection, I incorporated lace into a bunch of those pieces. And I hope to continue doing that, I think, especially as I go into my costume design program, which I still can't believe I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm excited to, like, continue that tradition of, like, designing that, putting that into my designs, but then also eventually making it. Um, I have some Bob and, some, uh, Battenberg lace things that I haven't made yet that I will preview with you here. Um, and eventually I will put these patterns on my Patreon first. I want to refine the D20, um, to be honest, before I do anything else. Um, but yeah, like, I, I started playing with this little needle lace cathedral situation and I want to mess with that a little bit more. Um, this is one that... I'm excited to work on for Halloween. It's a little pumpkin, uh, I guess doily, but yeah, I made this. I, I patterned this and I haven't worked on it yet, so I can't wait to work on it. Um, I can't wait to make a video about Battenberg lace actually, because I think I'm more confident in that and can show you um, a lot more of like that skill eh, as I drop things. I will probably do a series on this D20. Um, maybe it's just on the 20 itself um, to help people kind of use that as a sampler because I think that could be a nice sampler because it's you know you have to lay the Battenberg tape and then you fill it in and I feel like if I do this so that each filled in place each face of the die is a different stitch that could be a really fun class I teach. I did do needle lace for the scholarship from Macy's that I didn't win and I try to get my outfit and everything back but they're gone so my little vintage uh, earring facings that I used for my vintage needle lace for my needle lace earrings are gone forever but here's like the little piece that I use to try to make uh, those things I wanted to do a collar for that um, but I just didn't think it worked and I was using um, recycled materials which were um, it was a child's sweater taken apart and it just wasn't working well like I I made this little like I put a little Macy's star in needle lace for a collar and then like a little recycling symbol and I was going to do a collar situation like a very dramatic collar but I just didn't have a ton of time and I didn't love how this material looked. <laughs> Honestly if this tells you anything it's that 90% of any craft is just um in progress projects that you've forgotten about. Otherwise I don't know I've just been having fun and enjoying things so I, I hope that this was a fun little update that maybe provides you with some information on online classes for lace making and um, again like a reminder that I have the book review just because I think like there's a bunch of ways to get into this stuff. Uh, there's free online videos on YouTube. Um, they're sparse and I highly suggest if you can get a class and a scholarship to a class if you need that do one of those one-on-one -on -one intensive ones because those will set you up to then probably even learn at home a lot better. Um, but yeah if not that Bob and Lace book that I mentioned um, is fine to start with at home. And with that, I think we're good on my lace making review. Um, let us hope that I remember to do one next year for my three years of lace making and see where we are. Um, it's definitely a process, especially since it's not my main focus. Um, but I appreciate everyone who's come here and ex been excited about that part because um, it's a fun little thing to do while you're watching TV and doing stuff. Big shout out to my patrons because you support me month over month and that's really really helpful to me in terms of reminding me that like people are really interested invested in my work um, and it's a way to just support me you know continue to take classes and learn things and also me giving back to you as I learn um, and have time and feel confident teaching you skills. So I just want to say thank y'all so much. Um, it's beyond anything for you to be here and support this. Um, with that, thank you so much for joining me and don't forget to make it so, or I guess make it lace, make it lace.